There are a variety of different program and database settings you must consider before you begin to work with Digital Production Control. You can begin to review these settings by navigating to the Tools menu and choosing Options. On the General tab, you'll look at two things. You'll want to determine your roping method or your method for selecting takeoff objects. We recommend that you choose touching as it will allow you to quickly select anything within or touching the box you rope around the objects. We also recommend selecting the enabled color DWF, DWG, and PDFs. This will help DPC render copies of your drawings at a higher quality. Next, we'll remain in this window but move on to the next tab, New Bid. Under the General area, You'll want to select the typical number of hours per day your crews will be expected to work, as well as which day your crew's work week begins. This will help customize the time card tab in DPC. Under the DPC area, you'll want to leave Ignore Bid Areas on Time Card entries unchecked. This will allow for the most precise breakdown of time entry in your program. Also leave Send Image Files unchecked. Next, jump over to the DPC tab. You may add further customization to that time card by selecting how many hours you would like displayed in the drop-down list and to what detail you would like your results to show with respect to intervals of time. Under Toolbars, we recommend checking the option for Lock DPC Toolbars so that it is unlikely you would accidentally close a toolbar. This is an especially important setting for those using DPC via a tablet. Also choose the side of the program where you would like the DPC toolbars to appear. This allows you to customize the location of the toolbars such that they are conveniently placed for either a right or a left-handed foreman as they use their tablet. And finally, you'll want to select the option to always send DPC changes via Project Express. Next, we'll move on to establishing a few database settings. We'll navigate to the Master menu and choose Employees. Here, you will want to add anyone who will be associated with your projects, including the estimator, project manager, foreman, and everyone in the work crew. You can make these entries one by one, or you may import them and you can reference our user guide for more detailed instructions for importing those employee lists. As you're adding employees, you'll want to include their first and last names, a unique employee number, and their payroll class. You can always add new pay classes by typing in a new entry here. For project managers and foremen, you must also include their email address. It's important to note at this point that if you are planning on tracking production hours in a more general sense, rather than by individual crew member, you may also add entries here that simply highlight the payroll classes you wish to track. That might look like this. Next, navigate to the Master menu again, and this time, choose Job Statuses. If you don't have it already, create a Sold Status, and place a check mark under the Lock Bid column, so that any job with this status will be in read-only mode. Also, be sure to create an In Progress status as well.